Number 12, an aluminum kettle weighs 1.05 kilograms, kg, and then letter A, what is the heat capacity of the kettle? Okie dokie. So the question is asking for what's the heat capacity? We should know what a f the formula is for heat capacity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start letter A over here. Heat capacity is noted as uppercase C, okay? And the, the formula for heat capacity is capital C equals M times S. So lowercase m times lowercase s. If we want to write all these out, write uppercase C is the heat capacity. And if I'm using this formula, the heat capacity has to be in joules per degree Celsius. The M stands for the mass, and that's in grams, if I'm using this formula. And then the S represents the specific heat of the substance that they're talking about. The, sp the specific heat is going to be in joules per gram times Celsius. Okay, so we wanna solve for the specific heat, that's C. So I just need to know my M and times it by my S. So they told us that we have a 1.05 kilogram aluminum kettle. So I know that my mass has to be 1.05 kilograms. However, if I'm using this formula, the mass has to be in grams. So I have to convert these amount of kilograms into grams. Now, I gave you a little quick cheat sheet down here, right? If I'm starting at kilograms and I wanna go to grams, which is what I have, I'm going this way. And all you have to do is just take your kilogram value and multiply it by 1,000 to get to grams. So I could just take this 1.05 kilograms and times by 1,000 and I will get my gram value. Similarly, I could just take the decimal and just move it to the right three times and fill in the zero as a placeholder. Either way, you're gonna get the same answer. So in this case, when I do this math, 1.05 times 1,000, I will get, and maybe I'll just put it over here, I get 1,050 grams. That's my new M. Or mass, right? M for mass. So I have this value. And my S is my specific heat. They did not tell me that in the question. So either your teacher or professor expects you to know the specific heat of aluminum, or if it's on a quiz or exam, they might give that number to you. I provided it down here. Just know that the specific heat for aluminum, because they said aluminum, right, is 0 0.897. So we have both of these. So let's figure it out. Maybe I'll just do it here. Capital C equals the mass, which is now 1,050 times the specific heat, which is 0 0.897. C is the multiplication of those two things, 1050 times uh, 0.897. And for sig fig purposes, the lowest number that I have is three sig figs. So I'm going to cut it off at three sig figs. So this is 942 joules per degree Celsius. So that's the, that is the amount for the first thing. What's the heat capacity? 942 joules per uh, one degree Celsius. So that's letter A. Now let's move on to B. I'll do B over here. B says how much heat is required to increase the temperature of this kettle from 23 degrees Celsius to 99 degrees Celsius. Okay, so when they're asking for an amount of heat, a heat is a Q value. So in this case, we are solving for a Q. I don't know what Q is, so I'll label it as X. You could put like a question mark here, it doesn't really matter. Now, I'm increasing the temperature, so I have a change in the temp. Specifically, I'm increasing, so I'm adding heat. It's getting hot, and it kind of makes sense. You're increasing the temp, so it's going to get hotter, right? Now, I have a start temp. I'm starting from 23, and I'm going to 99. So I have an initial temp, Ti, right, of 23.0 degrees Celsius, and I have a final temp of 99. 0.0 degrees Celsius. 
Now, I have a Q value, I have different temperatures, I'm allowed to use other things from the beginning, right? They told us that this aluminum kettle had a mass of 1,050 grams. So I'm going to take that information. We also have the specific heat down here on the bottom. So what's the formula that relates Q with the mass, with the, the a temperature, with the specific heat? That's this formula, right? Q, and maybe I'll write it in black, Q equals M S delta T. The S you might know as a C if you're doing specific heat, but I'm just going to use it as an S. So the Q is the heat value. This is in uh, joules. So when you're finding out a heat value, it's got to be in joules. The M is the mass, just like before, right? And that's the gram value. The S, just like in the equation before, that's the specific heat. So that's in joules per gram times Celsius. And then the delta T, this little triangle, that means delta. That's the change in temp, and that's in degrees Celsius. So the first thing I have to figure out is I have to figure out what this delta T is, right? Delta T is the change in the temperature. Specifically, it's the final temp minus the initial temp. So it's always final minus initial. So from this, a delta T equals 99.0 degrees Celsius minus the 23.0 degrees Celsius. So I have a delta T, a change in temp of 99 minus 23. So I get 76.0 degrees Celsius. So now all I have to do is I just have to plug in and solve for the Q. Now, maybe, let's see, I might need to start erasing here, but maybe I'll just go over here, right? If I say Q equals, right? Q equals, I'm using this information. The mass was 1,050. I have to use this instead of the kilograms because the mass has to be in grams. The specific heat of aluminum was the same number as before, so 0.897. And now the delta T, which we just solved for, right, because it's Q equals MS delta T, it's 76.0. Let's figure out how much heat is required. So Q equals... 1,050 times 0.897 times 76. Once again, I'm going to do three sig figs. So I'm going to put this number into scientific notation. So in scientific notation, because it's a big number, it's 7.88. 7.88 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4. A lot of joules here that are required to raise the temperature from 23 to 99. And that's the answer for letter B. So maybe what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the answers over here. So I'm just going to maybe just erase a couple of things here. So I'm just going to say, what's the heat capacity? This one was 942 joules per degree Celsius. For B, it's 7.88 times 10 to the fourth joules. And then I'll say that this equals, you know, capital C, this equals Q. And now I'm just going to get rid of the, uh, the writing here, just so that I have some room. And maybe, let's see, I'm not gonna get rid of these formulas because that's important. Okay. So now we're going to be working on letter C. So we did A, we did B, now we just got to do C. Letter C, how much heat is required to heat this kettle from 23.0 degrees Celsius to 99 degrees Celsius if it contains 1.25 liters of water and they gave us the density of the water, 0 0.997 grams per milliliter, and the specific heat of the water was 4.184 joules per uh, gram degree Celsius. Okay, so looks like from B to C, it's the same temperature change, right? I found out the temperature change of the 23 to 99, the same temperature is here. 
Now they're asking for how much heat, again, so I'm solving for a Q value, um, is required to heat this kettle. And remember the kettle, the actual kettle was aluminum, but now we're going even further and we're saying that it contains water in it. So this total amount of heat I need is to heat the actual kettle and to heat the water inside of it. So I basically have to find out two heats. What was the amount of heat to, to heat up the kettle from this temperature? That was the answer to B. Now we just got to find out how much heat it requires to actually raise the, the water inside the kettle. And they gave us, you know, important information. They gave us the specific heat of the water. So once again, I'm going to be using, and let me just put this as letter C, I'm going to be using Q equals MC delta T. And this now is all for the water. So I don't know what the heat required is to raise that water, right? And just like we said before, the M has to be in grams. The S is the specific heat value, and the change in the temperature is the final minus initial. Since it's the same final and the same initial, I know that this delta T has got to be the uh, whatever it was before, right? The 99 minus 23. So that was 76.0 degrees Celsius. They gave us a um, S value, and in this case, I just did this, the C, but it's an S. Let's just keep everything the same here. So the S value is the specific heat of the water, which is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And now here comes a little bit of the trouble, right? We have to find the mass. The mass was in grams. They gave us 1.25 liters of water. Somehow we have to go from liters to a gram value of water. This is going way, way back in the chemistry course, right? Whenever you want to go from a liter, basically a volume, to a mass, because that's what gram is, you have to use the density formula. Now, the density that they gave us was 0 0.997, and that's in grams per mil. The first thing you got to do is you have to get the volumes to match up. They gave it to me in milliliter, uh, they gave it to me in liters, but the density unit for volume is milliliters. So the first thing I have to do is I have to convert the 1.25 liters into milliliters. I have to make sure that the mass unit is grams and the volume unit is milliliters. So just like before, you can make a, a, a conversion between liter and mils. Maybe I'll just write it over here. If you're going from, li from liters to milliliters, all you have to do is times by a thousand. Sim similarly, you could just take the decimal and move it three spots over to the right. So if I just take my 1.25 liters and I times it by a thousand, I will get... 1,250 milliliters. That's the volume that I'm going to be searching for, right? So now let's convert. I want to find out the mass. Now there's a, there's a cool little trick that you could do with density to find out the correct units. You could draw this little triangle, make a T in the middle, and the units have to be D on the bottom left, M on the up, and the L on the right, the bottom right. Since we need to search for the mass of water, if you're writing this down on paper, hover over the M with your thumb so that it's not there anymore. That's what we're solving for, right? So mass equals, and now you see how the D, the density, and the liters are in the same blocks? This means multiplication. So mass is just density times liter. And now you have your formula. You're going to take the liter that you have, and in this case, whoops, hold on. This actually should be milliliter, but it should be a volume, right? In this case, it's mils. So it would be density times the milliliter. Hopefully that makes sense. But there's your formula. So I'm just gonna put this up here, right? The mass for the water 
is the density 0 0.997 times 1,250. So let's get that. A lot of calculations here to get the answer. So this is 1,246.25, and that's in the unit of grams. Okay. Now I finally have the mass to use in my Q equals MS delta T. So I'm just going to erase this conversion that we had to do in order to get the answer. And I think maybe I can just get rid of all this. Whee, look at that. Okay. And maybe I'll just say this is this. There you go. So now I'm going to find out how much heat it's required to just raise the temperature of the water. Q equals the mass that we just found, 1246.25 grams, times that by the specific heat of the water, 4.184, times that by the change in the temp, which we found out earlier, which was 76.0. So the amount of heat required to raise just the water is, this times what, 4.184, times 76. Sig fig rules, I have three. Uh, the smallest number is three sig figs, so my answer should have three sig figs. I'm going to put this in scientific notation, so 3.96 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's in joules. Now this is the amount of heat only to raise the water. Only. We want to know how much heat is required to heat the kettle and the water. So literally and plus. So to find the total heat, we need to just take the heat that it took to raise the aluminum to the temperature and add that to the heat that it took to raise the water. So let's just erase a little bit here. And maybe I'll just, actually, I'll leave this here. I'll bring this up a little bit just so that we have more room. And let's just find the answer. So the total amount of heat required is the heat from the aluminum, which we found out in, in B. So 7.88 times 10 to the fourth plus the heat of raising the water, which was the 3.96 times 10 to the fifth. And that is your final answer when you add the two of them together. So the total heat is 7.8, 7.88 times 10 to the fourth plus 3.96 times 10 to the fifth. These are both joule units. So when I add them together, I get, let's do three sig figs. So 4.75. times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's in joules. And there you go. That's the answer to C. How much heat was required to raise the aluminum and the water? You just, it's the sum of both of them. So uh, whatever that is, 475,000 roughly joules. And that's it. This one was a long one, but hopefully you guys you know, stuck with me. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought. Give this video a like if this helped. Subscribe to the channel if you would like to. That would help us out. We greatly appreciate you guys. We wouldn't be here without you. So I hope you guys have a great day. Keep studying hard, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.